Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Tackle Productions. Today, I Bancroft be joined once again by Nick, and like always, Fluff. We're back, baby. What's up, people? And like always, it's buttons on both. Feel free to click with the death for a reason. Today's matchup is our finals, actually. We got Fluff playing Sin Shinron, while Matt is playing Gogeta Soul Striker. Um, let's take it away. But before we go any further, this video is coming out on a Saturday, and I felt like Nick wanted to say something. Uh, happy Christmas, everybody. This is the time of year for red and green and love. So there's no red and green in this matchup. If only there was. If only there was a deck out there that was red and green and we played it Look, that day. You should have uh, beaten Matt in uh, an earlier round. Matt the video proof cheated. says otherwise. There it is. There it is. <laughs> so... Fluff. Yes. In our matchup earlier this week, you had, I think it was our match, you talked about it. You had mentioned there's a reason why you brought this deck to our locals. Would you like to talk about yeah. that? Yeah, I'm tired of playing against Soul Striker. Um, you people are tired of seeing it on the channel. Well, guess what? I'm tired of playing against it. Um, Sin Shenron actually has a decent matchup against Soul Striker. Specifically, not necessarily Blue Jacks, but Soul Striker, because I can tap out his leader and keep his leader, or while his leader is tapped, I can keep him basically on an every other turn where his leader doesn't get to restand, which kind of screws him on his energy management. Um, you'll see, I think it's in this turn that I end up going into a four drop to lock him out of restanding. I may wait a turn before I do it. Because typically, you want to stop them from being able to awaken on turn three and then being able to stand two energy. So I want to try to aggro him out over this turn and the next turn and put him at a low life total and either force him to awaken the old-fashioned way or force him to awaken tapped out on turn three or wait until turn four. And I know... Yeah. Your deck is unique unique to stopping his leader swing. Like some decks can do it and some decks have like access to the blue yellows and monster super combo, but just that Sin Shenron is like a linchpin in this matchup and I, I dig it. Yeah. Um I know that we had what, three Soul Striker um players this past weekend. And if I recall correctly, all of them were different decks in their own unique way. And I know previously, um, to this round you played against Jake, who had his Soul Striker variant film, which I think we saw on the channel earlier this week. Um, and I know you had, like, that came down to, like, the wire for you. So, like, playing in their Soul Striker deck, what were you, like, thinking? The difference is, like, their decks are very different in their choices and the text that they chose to include within their decks. But the real difference is the difference between Matt as a player and Jake as a player. Now, I don't say that in a way that takes away from either one of them, but Jake is very methodical and will think through everything to make the absolute best play he can, whereas Matt has a very, um, I'm going to read the cards, wing it to the best of my ability until I know exactly what's going on, and then once the jig's up, I'm going to punish you. So it's it's easier for me to advantage this game over Matt than it was against Jake. But Matt, as you'll see, starts to figure things out as we move the game along. And it it, it makes a difference. I'll just say that. Ooh, so bouncing that back to your hand, I don't know if that's the best play. <laughs> no, it's not the best play. No, it's not the best. Uh, and 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 those are the tiny little things that I'm talking about. Um, I haven't really hurt Soul Striker the way that I intend to hurt his Soul Striker just yet. And so he doesn't really realize how threatening that four drop is quite at this point. Well, it's kind of one of those things where we haven't really seen this deck in our shop in a while. Like, I know Scotty used to play it a while ago, but you were the only one that really was on it. So, Dan, you haven't played it in a long time, right? Uh, it's been... Oh, gosh, I haven't played it since set 13 came out. 
No. Since set 12 came out, I guess. So, like, almost a year ago? Yeah, I mean, it's been close to a year since... I mean, I know I've played it this year, but it is close to a year, yeah. So it could be one of those things where he just honestly forgot or doesn't remember. Um, especially with the control variant, because you don't really see it. Well, I mean, now you see it now that Selzino was hit, but there was a time when you almost never saw the control variant. It was all the aggro. I've always preferred the control variant to the aggro variant, because the aggro variant is a very glass cannon style of deck. Whereas the control deck is very difficult to play against. And it's very difficult to sequence through. Um, it seems like it could be easy, but there's a lot of opportunities for mistakes for both myself as the send player and for the opponent going up against it and just different ways to play against it that way. So what are some of the big uh, differences between the two? Between, between the aggro variant and the uh, control variant? Yeah. So the aggro variant very much so focuses on using crit, large crit strikes to deny your opponent resources, whereas the control variant does have an aggro component to it, but it wants to control your opponent's plays and make them either play weird or decrease the value of their plays as they play them. Those are the two big differences. The, the aggro variant doesn't really do what the crit variant does or the control variant, and the control variant doesn't really do what the aggro variant does. And here, in that way. you're just trying to get him to either force an awaken out of him or just let him go down a three life, I guess. Or waste cards in his hand. And there, I think he burned two super combos, it was just which I was equally as... Uh, okay. I mean, it was just to get him to waste resources or awaken. Um, I know I'm not done here, so he's either going to <laughs> oh, have man. to give up one or the other. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's rough. I mean, Soul Striker is a leader who only draws two, so it really isn't a downside to just awakening, you know, at this point. Because he can't swing yep. next turn. Right. He can't swing next turn. So if he awakens by playing his unison, he's going to pass with no open energy, which I'm equally happy with. Yeah, and being tapped out on blue is kind of not a death sentence per se, but it's, it definitely hurts. Um, at least having one open energy is where you can do most things, but completely tapped out. Uh, yikes. Yeah. And there I got him to burn the awaken. Um, there was a ruling question about this awaken. If his leader could now attack now that it's a new instance of a card, but it's not a new incident instance of the leader card. So even awakened, he still may not attack with that card after my four drop affects it. And putting that pressure on him, and it's only turn three, or is it turn three or four? It was. It's turn. turn it was. It was my turn three. Matt was on two energy. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And full <laughs> clarification: his leader is upside down as a reminder he cannot swing with it. Yeah. Because I think I walk over one point, like, in the later round, I'm like, what's, what? <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy Man. amount of pressure. And that's, that's the perfect spot where you want to be. Like, even if you being tapped out, like, he he's so on the back foot now, like, he's got to play, like, extremely weird. Yeah, and that's that's the whole that's the whole idea is I want him to play weird because if he's playing weird, he's not playing optimally. Now you will see there is a point where once Matt gets to a certain point in the game, he's going to be able to really manage what's on my field, like right there, being able to put out the Nova Shinron or being able to bounce the Nova and um, Omega Shinrons back to my hand but I'm still going to be able to play those next turn. It's just, he's making me waste my energy doing things again, as opposed to just starting out with all that pressure. But is this one of those scenarios where it's like a reloading the gun scenario situation where you can just pop off just tremendously. You don't really get any on play effects for either card. 
So I wouldn't say that it's like uh, reloading the gun. He is here kind of reloading that four drop, I believe. No, he killed at that time. So the four drop dying was monumental. I should have probably restood that card to protect it, but I don't really care about the nine drop in this matchup. Um, here, it looks like he's finally going, uh, he's going to go for the full field wipe and I'm still sitting at six life and it might look like, oh, that sucks. I just lost my whole field, but I'm going to be able to very easily reestablish my field. I mean, you established that with just a three energy beforehand. So, but it, yeah. once again, you did mention like, it isn't the worst play because even though you could reestablish it. You have to go back through the process of spending that energy for that. Yeah. Now, I did look away. What happened to your four drop again? He swung into it and he killed KO'd it. it. So you, you don't get the effect of that because it wasn't by skill, right? Correct. The four drop specifically has to be removed by skill. Um, whereas the the big nine drop is KO'd by, is, is either by KO or by skill. Now, I don't remember if Matt plays. I think he, maybe he did at one point, but there is the Goku Vegeta negate. When you negate with the card, it's the one drop you negate with it, and you play the card in rest mode. Yeah, that would Super go synergy. Yeah, that would go great with this unison. Yeah, that. I don't know that he's actually playing that card. If he is, I didn't see it. Um, and I can't I remember. Like the cards. I do too. I think the card's fantastic. Um, here, I'm just seeing what I can get. I know I'm going to reestablish an ice. I know I'm going to reestablish that Omega. And I'm really just trying to bait out at this point. I'm trying to get him to God ceiling. Yeah, he's waiting for that uh, big boy. He's waiting for He's waiting for me to activate on the ball. Because I won't get the ball back if he waits to God sealing the ball. Um, but that very well could be the, a double edged sword because, I mean, once he uses it the one time, it's it. Like, yeah. But I run a very limited number of balls, ooh, right? I'm guessing he didn't have uh, any dimension magic in his hand because. Like, once you did that first swing, that was it. <laughs> like, because he only had two markers on it, so Gosling wouldn't even been a thing. Yeah. I wish I'd I had, had a way to tap his leader, so I could have put the four drop back out. But instead, I'm just going to have to kind of... Uh, going to have to kind of go with, go with the flow here, as they say. So here, he does a Rebirth of Justice for the Frieza... Um, I'm going to end up having to mill two cards and Rebirth of Justice mandatorily made him send a card back to my hand. So the Omega Shenron went back to my hand. Yeah, he's me and him have had matches where he's played that card and he's he always like makes a little scoff whenever he activates it because he never wants to bounce anything back to hand. Yeah, but you have to with that card. Yeah. Um, This is kind of unfortunate because... He did finally get his restand on the Soul Striker, so he's kind of back on the path that he wants to play, and he's kind of back into a point of control. But what I'm hoping is that the damage has been done. I'm still on five life. I haven't even awakened yet, and we're about to go into turn five. Um, he swung with the triple strike, and I hit it with a final flash, so I would only take one instead of going down to two. Which is definitely smart. Like, not knowing, you know, the Chompa double strike or units, uh, sorry, not units, it's um, overrealm cards he potentially can play. Could have put you in a tight spot if you didn't have that card there. Yeah. Now, the Frieza doesn't hurt the ball when he negs. Uh, no, one... because the card's not affected by skills. Ah. That's how you. Very sneaky. Yeah, that's how the deck's able to actually function, at least the, uh, the Sin Shinron part of it. I think I think all of the standalone balls are unaffected by skill your opponent's skills or I think skills yep. in general. Because I don't uh, think you could use your own cards. You can use you can affect them by your skills. Oh, you can. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it specifically says opponent skills. So, like, like I don't remember if it's in perfect. this matchup, but I've sent a one-star ball to the drop area to play an Omega Shinron. Wait, can you do that with the one-star ball? Oh, the balls? Mm-hmm. All right. Wild. <laughs> So here you're locking down um, the leader again. Yep. I'm just moving right into that and going for it. Um, here, I'm checking to see what's how many super combos he's used. I'm reading um, the PyCon in his drop area because I don't want to get PyCon'd here. Well, just restart your chain. I mean, you had to spend one more energy but because it plays the ball right after because he bounces it back to your hand with PyCon if you were to do it. Thing is, is, I'm not going for the chain here. No, I, I get that, yeah. Um, I am specifically trying to... I am trying to win the game here. Yeah, him going to five energy is very risky. <laughs> now, we'll talk about this later. We'll come back to this moment in a bit. Um, something I do want to talk about here. But I want to hold off until a certain point occurs. Yeah. One of you guys make a play that I, I'm, I'm kind of confused by, but I don't want to give it away just yet. And you're. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I know what you're talking about, though. I don't. I can't wait to be surprised. Um. Either I don't have the ability to do it this turn. See, there you go. I told you I adjusted his bat. <laughs> that, um, that's the strat. You cheated there, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the thing that you didn't see, and this is all movie magic, but when I did that, I shook his deck and put the worst possible card on top. Um, here, I'm... Baiting negates, I'm baiting counters, I'm baiting responses. Yeah, and he did just dimension magic your uh, attack from the four drop. Yep. I want him to burn resources in his hand. I think he's at like nine cards in hand. Now he's at nine cards. Heroic Prospect. Yeah. Heroic Prospect is actually pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, if you're able to play it early enough, I mean, it can really slow this the pressure down. We got the successor um, going on here. All right. Got the cell play. So here I go for cell. I'm going to get to rip three cards. Then I've got two quad strikes. And then I also have a triple strike Shenron in my hand. Which, um, for each of those, you're going to have to bottom deck, uh, what, two cards? Four? Two cards. So I'm looking at having to get rid of six cards. So now in order the question to is, how much is it? Yeah, how much is in your hand right now? I have seven cards in hand, I believe. Okay. Sorry. Right, so Matt's laying oh. his hand out. You pick your three cards. Yep. And the cards you hit, since we dimension uh, and Oof. baby hatch, and this is what I'm confused by. <laughs> Both turn three and four, you show that you have no problem playing cards very cheaply, very quickly. Yeah. I'm really curious, and unfortunately we couldn't get Matt to join in on this particular video, but I'm curious as to, I know a lot of people have the tendency to just, let me just hold off. Let me just hold off as long as possible, you know, with me doing um, Baby Hatch. But sometimes when you know a deck potentially go super crazy super fast you gotta shut that down i don't think that matt was expecting shinron to be able to do that over and over again which is and definitely that's a possibility. and and i think he even said i didn't think you could do that much in that turn so i wanted to go even harder my next turn, but I wanted to just survive that turn so I would have baby hatch for the next turn. Um, because he figured that I was almost done, he just didn't imagine that I would have cell, yeah, at that point. I mean, and even if you didn't, one energy you play Nova, you, you use Nova's burst two to play one from the you know, play one again, then I don't know, I just feel like both turns three and four, you were able to just so successfully 
go super wide and apply pressure. And that's always a fear. And I grant, what's he expecting Zeno sell? Probably not. But it is what it is. And I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Keep in mind, there's buttons down below and on the screen while Fluff does the outro. Yeah. Um, even though Shadow Dragons lost a lot of power when Cell was eroded, they can still, going from a board with just a ball on the field, they can make a two energy Zeno Cell. So you have to be careful of that. Um, as always, read your cards, know your plays. Let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to. And fluff out. Merry Christmas.